In this video, I'm going over the six mistakes new Linux users make. Mistake number one, not understanding the differences between Linux and Windows. They fundamentally work differently. So the big things to know here is updates. In Linux, there's no updates until you actually tell it to update. Big difference and a pretty cool one at that. Another thing is the packages. How programs are installed is completely different from Windows. When I first came to Linux, a lot of people are running to the website, going and installing a program by downloading the executable and running the setup. Well, it doesn't work that way in Linux. You have what's called package managers, and these things are pretty awesome. You literally can either do from terminal or they'll have a software center, and you just hit install or type install in the package name. It's that simple. And almost every package is on these things. So if you're looking for Steam, Discord, whatever it may be, they're on there. And it beats the hell out of doing it like you did in Windows. And the other common things and questions I get all the time is what antivirus should I use on Linux? And the answer is none. Linux doesn't need antivirus. That's the short of it. So don't install an antivirus. Don't worry about an antivirus. Just move on from that. Now, other questions I've gotten is mainly about file management, like defragmentation and those types of things. Well, Windows used what's called FAT and NTFS, both really dated, proprietary, and frankly, crappy file systems. Almost every single file system in Linux is superior in every way as far as speed, reliability, all these things. So you have ext4, betterfs, xfs, all these other file systems, which, you know, I'm sorry, I just rattle off a bunch of acronyms, but just know Linux does a better job and you don't need to worry about defragmenting either. So mistake number two, choosing the wrong distribution. Many new Linux users think or hear or look at something and go, man, I like how that guy's Linux looks. What distribution is he on? Because I need to jump on that. No, no you don't. What you really should do is think of something that is beginner friendly that will be kind to you right out of the gate. That's why I always recommend Linux Mint, but I understand some people that's not their jam. Try Pop! OS. It is fantastic. The reason why I recommend these two distributions is because a lot of things are already done for you. You don't have to go out of your way to do pretty much anything because most of them have options to install what's called non-free or proprietary repositories. And why that's big and in most distributions out there and when it comes to Linux, don't install these by default, which pretty much hamstrings you because you can't do encoding, you have problems installing games, there's all kinds of issues with them. We're on Linux Mint and also Pop! OS. They've kind of made these decisions for you already and they have little check boxes that you say, yes, I want to be able to play music. Yes, I want to be able to play games. And that's kind of big, especially for a beginning user. So don't get hung up on the distributions. I highly recommend just sticking to the two I just mentioned. And uh, let's move on. Number three, installing software the wrong way. Uh, so a lot of new users immediately jump into terminal or they log in as root and or they switch user to root and then start installing a whole bunch of crap because they don't want to type the sudo command. This is so bad on so many levels because what happens is when you run as root or you switch user to root, everything is assigned the root, meaning when you exit and you're on your user, it will have zero access to everything you were doing on root. Ugh, it sucks. Don't do that. Don't make that mistake. Don't be that guy because I've been there and it's not fun. Mistake number four, sticking to Windows based programs. Know that when you come to Linux, certain programs aren't going to work. If it's Adobe or Microsoft Office, you're just jonesing for and you have to have. Well, try the web-based variants if you can handle that. That's what I do for my Microsoft Office fix. But 
some users out there try to run them all in wine and then they try and get the latest and greatest versions and then just stick with them. And now that just doesn't work. It doesn't work properly. It doesn't work well. In that same vein, definitely be looking for alternatives in Linux. So if you're not willing to switch off of those programs, or at least use an older version that is more compatible with like a wine type solution, which is a compatibility layer to run it in Linux, um, you might think about just sticking with Windows because some Windows programs just don't work well in Linux and probably never will, such as Microsoft Office, such as Adobe until they release a Linux based product. But in the meantime, look for Linux based alternatives. And I'm going to give you an example here. When I first came over, I was using Microsoft Office. I tried a bunch of Linux software. I never really liked any of LibreOffice. OpenOffice is okay. And I tried a bunch of different ones and I didn't really like them all and that's okay. So what I ended up doing was just using the online Microsoft Office or you could use Google G apps. You know, the Google apps is actually pretty well as well online. But just know that's kind of like the alternative that I did here. The other thing was I was using Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere. Uh, I was using Filmora for some things for video editing. So all those things were very proprietary and don't work on Linux. So I switched over to Caden Live for my video editing. And then I also switched over to GIMP from Photoshop. And these things were not easy. And anybody that says, oh, well, you should just use them. This is obviously someone that has never been in this predicament. I had literally 10 years of knowledge between all of these softwares. I knew how to use them really well. So when I tried to use GIMP for my images, I hated it. It was horrible. I mean, I think if you watch my first 30 days in Linux, which I'll link that up here, you'll see how much I struggle with this. But nowadays, I absolutely love GIMP. I was on Windows the other day and I was like, I can't use Photoshop. I need GIMP. I have all my scripts and crap in there. And I actually was using GIMP, which is hilarious. If you look at my first 30 days, I absolutely despised GIMP. I wanted my Photoshop. Just know that's going to be a thing. But be open to the possibility of changing and learning these new programs. And as far as Caden Live, uh, that's where I really saved a ton of time because Premiere and Femora, I had really inefficient processes. And when I'm using Caden Live, I'm able to not only do just as good of a job, but I do it twice as fast. So pretty awesome and powerful. And let's get to mistake number five, backslash versus forward slash. You'll start to realize everything in the file system uses forward slashes. And in Windows, you'd go C colon backslash and then, you know, the path name. Just remember this phrase I'm about to tell you. Microsoft thinks backwards, so they use backslashes. Everyone else in the world, Mac, Linux, they think forwards, so they use forward slashes. That's why the whole World Wide Web all the addresses use forward slashes. That's why in the Linux file system, it uses forward slashes. So just remember that backslashes, no. You, you don't need to ever use a backslash in Linux. And mistake number six, distro hopping. And I am guilty of this one. When I first came, I was looking for that silver bullet, that thing that just fit me just right and that had all the things that I was looking for and really what I needed to know was that everything in Linux is customizable. If there's something you don't like about your existing distribution, change it. You can change your file manager if you don't like your file manager. If you like a screenshot tool that another desktop environment uses, grab that and put it on this one. You can mix and mash so many things in Linux and grab pretty much whatever it is you want and make the perfect distribution. Just stop installing and reinstalling and just killing yourself trying to find the perfect one. You need to learn how Linux works. You need to learn the ins and outs and how to change what it is you don't like. And that is really the power of Linux because you can change your menus, you can change your bootloader, you can change your desktop renderer if you wanted to. I mean, it's amazing how much customizability 
that is in Linux. It's just unfathomable, especially when I first came over. I really had no idea how much stuff you could change. Ah, it's just amazing. And even today, I'm still learning and learning and learning about all the other customizability options and things I don't even know yet. Because I've only been on Linux for six months. And wow, there's just so much you can do with it. So that's the six mistakes that new Linux users make. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video.